Hey, good morning everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth and we're going to get into section 8.3 on trigonometry here and we're going to discuss what's called the tangent ratio. Okay, those mysterious buttons on your calculator, uh, one of them abbreviated TAN, uh, is called a tangent. Alright, and we're going to discuss what the tangent ratio is along in, with sine and cosine in the next lesson here. Uh, when we talk about trigonometry and how to solve uh, for sides and angles on right triangles. First of all though, Let's talk about a little Latin derivation here. Trigonometry is a modern word that comes from two Latin words. Uh, the first Latin word is trigonon, okay, which means triangle back in the day. Now we're talking about back in the Greek times, about 2,500 years ago, okay, and it's Latin, Latin derivation. The other one, the uh, other part of the word comes from a Latin word called metron. Okay, which means measure. The Greeks put these two to, together and they used trigonon and metron and put it together and we call that triangle measure. That new modern word called trigonometry right here means triangle measure, or the measurement of triangles in respect to their sides and angles. Triangle uh, measure or triangle measurement. Okay, let's make that singular triangle measurement. Okay, so we're going to be learning how to uh, find the unknown sides and unknown angles of a right triangle here, a right triangle, using what's called a tangent function first and then in later sections uh, we're going to use the sine and cosine ratios. Okay, now there are three special ratios involving right triangles and again they are right triangles. Okay, we're studying right triangle trig right now. Let me put my tools away here. These are my measuring tools that we're going to be needing later. All right, the first uh, ratio that we're going to study is the tangent. Okay, the next ratio that we're going to study is the sine and then the cosine. Now, all these functions are on your calculator and they're abbreviated with the first three letters of each word. TAN for tangent, SIN for sine, and COS for cosine. You're going to see those on your scientific calculator. And these are the three trigonometric functions that we're going to be studying. All right, we start with the tangent ratio, as I keep saying. All right, first of all, we need to define it. So let's do that. Let's bring it down here a little bit. And let's define the tangent ratio in respect to angle A. Okay, this is an angle. So let's focus our attention here on angle A. A triangle has three sides. All right, and we need to identify the sides uh, the following way. First of all, the side opposite of the right angle is always the hypotenuse hypotenuse, okay? I abbreviate, abbreviate that HYP in my notes. Now, even though the side, uh, or the angle A has two adjacent sides, AB and AC, AB is always the hypotenuse. It's never called the adjacent side. The leg that is adjacent to the angle is referred to as the adjacent side. So let's write that down, adjacent. Okay, now adjacent, I abbreviate it as ADJ in my notes. The side opposite of uh, angle A, which is the furthest away, is referred to as the opposite side, and I abbreviate that OPP for short in my notes. So we have the opposite side, which is furthest away, we have the adjacent side, and we have the longest side opposite of the right angle called the hypotenuse. With these uh, three words here, this terminology, we can define the tangent of an angle, in this, res in this case angle A, the following way. We say that the tangent of angle A, and again, when a capital A refers to the angles of a triangle here, okay, it's always one of the acute angles, either acute angle A or B. You never take the tangent of C. Um, we define that to be the following ratio. It's the ratio of the opposite side, okay, of angle A, because we're talking about angle A here, divided by the adjacent, all right, side of angle A. So simply put, uh, in simple terms, the tangent function here is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Okay. So if I ask you to define tangent, I want you to re respond to me opposite side divided by adjacent side or simply opposite divided by adjacent. Okay. In real terms, these, these sides are going to be lengths okay? or, or one's going to be known, one's going to be unknown. Or they may both be known and we might have to find the angle. We're going to see all those cases. All right, so we define the tangent ratio or the tangent of an angle 
as the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. That right there is our main definition and you need to commit that to memory. All right, and you will through a lot of application. Okay, now let's find the tangent ratios for many similar triangles. In this diagram over here that I have, um, what we want to do is take a few measurements and discover what all these calc uh, values on the calculator represent. All right, and I want to show that to you by example. So I'm going to be using a calculator on my uh, computer here, and you're going to be using your own. Get your scientific calculator out. And then the first thing we need to do is measure some sides. Okay, now first of all, we have two triangles in here. Oops, okay, let me get my highlighter here. We have a small right triangle here. We call it the triangle ADE. And then, of course, we have the larger one, uh, ACB. So ADE is the small one <coughs> that's highlighted, and this ACB uh, is the main one, or the big triangle. Keep that in mind. And what I want to do now is measure um, right here. I want to measure all these segments. I want to measure the angle A, and I want to take the ratio of opposite side to adjacent side on the small, and I'm going to do it for the big, and I'm going to use my calculator and calculate some values and make some connections here. <coughs> okay, so what I'm going to do and you can do this too uh, if you have a ruler handy, is I'm going to measure uh, all these distances with uh, a ruler using the metric system. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do this here. Here we go. Uh, you'll notice that distance from uh, D to A is 1, 2, 3, 4, about 4.1 um, uh, centimeters. Okay, so let's record that. Let me take this off here. Uh, there we go. So I said 4.1 centimeters, so 4.1 uh, centimeters. And what we want to do is measure ED uh, simultaneously, okay, right after that. So we line up the zero marker with D here. It's a little challenging here on the computer, but go ahead and uh, follow me. So here we go. Oh, I got the uh, wrong side of the... Oh, you know what happened? This is kind of wild here. Let me switch sides here. How did I do that? Okay, I got my metric ruler back. What's cool about the computer is I can switch from metric to standard on top and bottom. Okay, um, let's measure distance from D to E. So if you look closely here, that's one centimeter. It's a little, uh, it's between 1.7 and 1 1.8 uh, centimeters here. So I'm going to estimate that about, I'll just round down to 1.7. Okay, let's take that off and let's label that. So we have 1.7 centimeters here. Okay, now let's uh, do some dividing here. Let's get the calculator going also. Okay, so what we want to do is calculate some tangent ratios. Okay, on the small triangle first, obviously. Now, our attention is on angle A, opposite of that. This is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. Uh, the tangent of my angle A, in this case, is 1.7 divided by 4.1. Let's go to the calculators and calculate that value. Okay, so here's mine. One of the things you need to do on, on a calculator like this is make sure you're in degree mode and all your calculators, on all, all scientific calculators, no matter what type you have, you have to be set on degree mode. So in this case, you might see DEG on your screen or simply a D. But make sure you don't see RAD or R because that's radiance. Make sure you're in degree mode. I am. So uh, 1.7 divided by 4.1. Let's get an answer here. It's about 0.414, okay? Uh, almost 4.2, or 0.42, excuse me. But it's about point, well, let's call it 0 0.414. 0 0.414. All right, now let's, uh, let's make some connections here. What do these numbers on your catheter represent when you take the tangent of an angle? What we need to do is measure the angle A here. So let's grab uh, the protractor here. There we go. Let's line up the zero marker. Let me make this a little bit smaller so we can use it more effectively here. No, 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 no. Yeah, there we go. First thing you need to do when you use a protractor is line up the zero at the center of the protractor at the vertex. Line up zero with one of the sides of the angle, and you start measuring. OK, 
okay? All right, let me make this a little bit bigger. So here we go, 0, 10, 20. It's about 22, 23 degrees, okay? So let's take this off. It's about 23 degrees, this angle right here. Let me get some room here. So from here to here, it's 23 degrees. That's your angle A. And now notice uh, we have the tangent of 23 degrees. Let's figure out what that is on the calculator and try to make some connections here. All right. So here we go. Let me move my tools out of the way. Uh, I want to take, uh, on modern calculators, you just enter in exactly the way it is. You just type in tangent of 23 degrees and uh, hit equal sign. On the older calculators, you enter the angle first, then hit tangent. And notice we get about 0.424. 4. So 0.424. Okay, we're only off by a hundredth here. And notice that these values are the same to the nearest tenth. These calculator values here are nothing more than ratios of two, of two sides, opposite divided by adjacent. And the programmers of these calculators have stored these values into the calculators for you, for you to use them. And so these values that you're seeing on your calculators are not mysterious at all. When you take the tangent sine or cosine of an angle, you get some, uh, simply a, a ratio of two sides, opposite to uh, adjacent in respect to the tangent function. And that changes for sine and cosine, but these are just ratios of correspond uh, not corresponding sides, but the ratios of two sides. And this ratio doesn't change for all similar triangles that involve a 23 degree angle. So let's do it one more time here for the big triangle. I need to measure BC, so let me gr grab my ruler again, and let's line it up properly here um, with a zero. I need to uh, change, let's see here, oh, and then it's switched around here, hang on, okay, I'm back in business again, so we're going to measure from C to A, the long side here, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, about 6.2 centimeters, all right, 6.2 centimeters, and let's see, let's measure C to B at the same time here so we can get some measurements. I'm going to rotate up here. Okay, lock it in. That's 1, 2, oh, it's about 2.6. All right, so here, 2.6 centimeters, and then, oh, I just forgot what the other one was, so let me line it up again and rotate down, and that's about 6, 6.1, 6.2. All right, so here we go. So the distance from C to A is about 6.2 centimeters. Okay, that's the adjacent side, and opposite of angle 23 degrees is, is again, uh, 2.6. So on the big triangle, my tangent of angle A is 2.6 divided by 6.2, roughly. Okay, and let's get a, go to the calculator here, and let's divide the two. Let's take 6.2. Uh, excuse me, clear that out. It's not correct. 2.6 divided by 6.2, and we get about 0.42 rounded to the nearest hundredth. So 0.42 rounded to the nearest hundredth. And notice that this value and that value and that value are all the same, basically. Why? Because we're talking about similar triangles with similar angles, and therefore their opposite divided by adjacent ratio is going to be the same. It doesn't matter what... Uh, how big the triangle it is. As long as it's similar, meaning that it contains the same angles, you're going to get the same thing. Okay? So these, these calculator values, when you're using the trig, are nothing more than ratios of two sides. Keep that in mind. They're not mysterious. And the values in the table, uh, let, me, uh, let me show you the table for a moment. The values in the table are not mysterious either. If I, let's take a look at uh, the table here and show you what I'm talking about. This is what I used back in 1983 when I did this lesson here. My teacher gave me this, this sheet here and I had to use it to calculate the tangent values and the cosine and sine values. Now what we just did there was we took the, we had a 23 degree angle here. It's right here now. A 23 degree angle. We're working with a tangent function. And so what I had to do is go straight across here and then I had to use this value, 0.4245. And if you notice on your calculator, um, if you take the tangent to 23 degrees, it's 0.4245, rounded to the nearest ten thousandths. And now it's the same as this value right here on the sheet. I use this to help me out. And for those people that are not using the calculator, 
Well, you can use this here too because I can include it in, in your notes. It's also in the back of the book as well. All right. So this, this table of values here gives you the tangent, sine, and cosine values for all angles, uh, acute angles from 0 to 90. We can use that if we wanted to, but I'm going to show you how to do with the calculator uh, the more modern way. All right, so let's, let's get some practice here uh, on some familiar triangles called the 30, 60, 90. So let's label first. Let's suppose this is 30 and this is 60 and, of course, this is 90. This is your famous 30, 60, 90 triangle. Uh, let me, let's put some values on here so we can calculate the tangent of angle A and then the tangent of angle B because that's what our job is to do. So let's suppose that the hypotenuse, okay, is 2. From our knowledge of the 30, 60, 90, we know that the short side, if this is given here, 2 is given, is half the hypotenuse. It's half the hypotenuse. So half of 2 is 1. And we know that to get to the median length side, we multiply the short side by right three, uh, root 3. So 1 times root 3 is simply root 3. So that's just our knowledge uh, from the 30, 60, 90. Now what we want to do is find the tangent and of angle A and then the tangent of angle B. This question is not a calculator question. It's simply a question designed to see uh, if you understand what the tangent of an angle is. Remember, this is just an angle, okay, and how it's defined. And the tangent of an angle is defined to be opposite side divided by adjacent side. So opposite of angle A is 1. That's opposite of A, angle A. And this is adjacent side, okay, adjacent to angle A. So the opposite divided by adjacent should be 1 divided by root 3. And that's all there is to it. Your first question in your homework is like this. So use your notes when you do your homework. Okay? All right? And the tangent of angle B is equal to, well, you're now up here. Your focus is up here at B. Opposite of B is now root 3. And the adjacent side is 1, so root 3 divided by 1, which is simply root 3. The only exception on this, uh, or not exception, but the only other thing I need to talk about when we deal with this is that this uh, fraction up here, 1 divided by root 3, needs to be rationalized. So let's go one step further and rationalize it. 1 times root 3 is root 3. Root 3 times root 3 is root 9, which is 3. And we uh, always rationalize the denominator here, as you guys were taught. So rationalize the denominator. Okay? So, um, that's simply it. This is just an exercise to see if you understand the definition of tangent. Opposite side, this is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. Remember, tangent is always opposite divided by adjacent. Opposite, all right, divided by adjacent. Simple. Write down the ratio of those two sides, and you are done. Okay? Remember, your first problems in your homework are just like this. They're not calculator questions. They're simply questions... Uh, asking you to use the definition of tangent, and that's it. This one is just like it, the next two examples, so let's go through these as well. we got a 45, 45, 90 here. So the angles here are 45 degrees. Uh, it's isosceles right here. Remember, this is isosceles. Isosceles, right, triangle. Okay, and let's suppose that I give you the, the hypotenuse, okay? And let's suppose the hypotenuse is... 2. Alright, how do you get to the leg? Alright, so what you have to remember on the 45, 45, 90 is that you divide it by root 2. So let's do that over here. 2 divided by root 2. Got to rationalize. And you get 2 times root 2 all divided by root 4, which is 2. Simplify, and you get root 2. And these are the legs. Okay? So this is root 2, and this is root 2. So in your homework here, if they don't give you all three sides and only one on a special right, find the other sides and then you can answer these questions here. What is the tangent of the angle? Let's talk about that. Now if you're at angle A right here, opposite of that is root 2. This is opposite of A. And adjacent to A is right here, root 2. So the tangent ratio is root 2 divided by root 2 or 1. In this question, I'm not asking you to find the angle A. I'm just asking you to find the tangent of the angle, which is just a ratio of two sides, the opposite side divided by the adjacent. 
Now, in this special right triangle, the tangent of B is going to be the same thing, because opposite of B is root 2, and the adjacent to B is also root 2. So for this special case, it's, you get the same thing. Okay. Now, let's try it with a Pythagorean triple. Okay, we know that the smallest triple, okay, is the 3, 4, 5. So 3, 4, 5, this side has to be 3. And if you didn't remember that, well, all you have to do is place a variable there and solve it using the Pythagorean theorem. All right, now let's do this. Let's take, uh, let's take this triangle and let's find the tangent of A first. And again, it's just the opposite of A, which is root 3, or excuse me, 3, divided by the adjacent of A, which is 4. So we get 3 fourths, and you're done. Okay, I'm not asking you to find the angle here. I'm asking you simply to find the ratio of two sides, the opposite divided by the adjacent. So think simple, because this is simple. Okay, and then I want you to find the tangent of B. Well, the tangent of B is the opposite side. This is opposite of angle B divided by the adjacent side, <coughs> which is 3. So in this case, we have 4 thirds. So the ratio depends on what angle you're working with here, guys. The, uh, your focus point changes when the angle changes. So keep that in mind. This is the opposite of B, and this is the adjacent uh, side of B, angle B. Okay? Opposite divided by adjacent. All right, now let's uh, go to our first major example here where we really start doing some mathematics and we find some unknown side lengths. This is where it starts getting fun. Because up to this point, all we've done is getting used to the tangent ratio and learn how to identify the opposite and adjacent sides. Now we actually put it to work and we actually solve for an unknown side. In this case, W is the side length. It's right here. Okay, so uh, there are two methods to do this. You can use uh, angle A, the given one. So you can use angle, uh, excuse me, use angle B, or you can uh, use angle A. You can do it two different ways. Because if you know two angles out of the three, you can always find a third angle. And that's why there are, are two ways to do it. Okay, so first, first, here we go. Okay, so let's get to, to some real problem solving here. Uh, first of all, what we want to do is label the sides. All right, so let's do that. Uh, in respect to angle B here, 23 represents the opposite of angle B, and the adjacent side to angle B is W. Adjacent of angle B is, excuse me, yeah, is W. And so what we can do is we can say that the tangent of our angle, which is 70, 67 degrees here, is equal to 23 divided by W. Remember, it's always opposite divided by adjacent. Okay, well, to solve for W, what we need to do is get it out of the denominator, and that's pretty simple. All we have to do is multiply both sides by the denominator, clear the fractions. And what we get is W times the tangent of 67 degrees is equal to uh, 23. Okay, now we're still trying to solve for W here, and since it's being multiplied by the tangent of 67 degrees, all I have to do is just divide both sides by that number here, which is the tangent of 67 degrees, and we get W by itself. Okay, we solve for W. W is going to be approximately equal to 23 divided by tangent of 67 degrees, whatever that is. All right, so let's calculate that value. Let's take 23 divided by the tangent of 67 degrees and get a value. And it's about 9.763. 9.763 uh, <coughs> <coughs> units on um, to the nearest thousandth. Yeah, which makes sense because this W here, this length here, BC, is much shorter than CA. So I expected an answer much shorter than 23 and I got it. Okay, now you don't have to use angle uh, B. You could use angle A. We know that the sum of all three angles inside is 180. So if I take uh, 67 plus 90, I get 157. And then if I take 180 minus 157, I get 23 degrees. So this angle here is 23 degrees from here to here. So if I want to use this angle here, I could. Now opposite of 23 degrees is now W. So this is opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. So what I could do, if I wanted to, is I could take the tangent of 23 degrees instead, set that equal to W divided by 23, and use this equation 
to solve for the unknown side. In this case, you can see that the, tr uh, the equations are a little bit different. In the first equation, w, the variable, is in the denominator. Now it's in the numerator. This typically is an easier way to do things, or easier to handle. You always divide, uh, take a look at the denominator here, and, <coughs> and you multiply by it, because I'm trying to isolate w here. So multiply both sides by 23, and I get 23 times the tangent of 23 degrees. Okay, well let's approximate that right now using the calculator. It only takes one step in this case. 23 times the tangent of 23 degrees. Wow, lo and behold, look at that. They have the same values, and we should expect that. Okay, 9.763 again. So no matter whether you use one acute angle or the other one, you're going to get the same value for the side, and that should make sense. These must be the same. All right, now in example number two, we want to find the angle. In this case, the angle is x. All right, the first thing that we do is, again, we identify the sides. And we go opposite of x is, is 8, so this is opposite of the angle. The adjacent side is 5. Okay, and of course, this unknown side opposite of the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse. But we don't know it, nor are we trying to find it. So don't use it. So we're going to use the tangent function one more time. We're, this time, though, we're going to take the tangent of our angle. This is, again, this is an angle now and set that equal to the opposite side, 8, divided by the adjacent side, 5. Again, it's opposite divided by adjacent. That's always the tangent function. Okay, that is the definition. But in this case, to solve for the angle, what we need to do is do the inverse. Okay, now, let me show you how to do this without the, uh, without the calculator first, because some of you guys are not going to be using the calculator. And this is how I did it back in the day. I know that uh, 8 fifths, is equal to 1 and 3 fifths, which is 1.6. I know that. I know. <laughs> I know this. So what I did is I, I got my table. So let's turn the page here and let's go to our trig tables. And I looked in the trig column for 1.6. So this is 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. .1 I keep on going down here. Oh, well, look right there. There is about 1.6. And then I look to the left and I saw that my angle was approximately 58 degrees. Now 1.6 is a little bit less than this, so my answer should be a little bit less than 58. So I'm estimating about 57.99 or something. All right. That's how I would. Uh, that's how I did it back in uh, back in the day when I was your age. All right. But nowadays with calculators, you just take the inverse tangent, and it should give you the same value, about 57.9 something. All right. So let's learn how to do that and learn how to write it as well. In mathematics, we always take the inverse, and the inverse tangent looks like this. In fact, let's write it down on the left. The symbol that you're going to be seeing on your calculator is, looks like this. It's called the inverse tangent, or tangent inverse. That's how you say it in English. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the inverse tangent of both sides. And so what I do is I take the inverse tangent of the left side, and which is tangent x, and then I take the inverse tangent of the right side, because whatever you do on one side, well, you better do it on the other side too, right guys? All right, I need to get a fifth here. And the inverse tangent of tangent x gives you x here. These functions are inverses. They cancel each other out, giving you the angle. All right, and that's equal to whatever this is. Now on the calculator, you do it like this. Notice that the tangent function right above it is the tangent inverse. It's blue, so I've got to hit the second button first, the blue button. It's all color-coordinated. So if yours is yellow, hit the yellow button. If yours is green, hit the green button. If yours is blue like mine, hit the blue button. So I go tangent inverse of 8 divided by 5 equals. And you get about 57.99, which is what I said earlier on the table. 57.995, in fact. So 57.995 degrees, because it's an angle. Now, if you're using the old calculators, you would enter in 8 divided by 5 first and hit equals, and then hit second tangent, which is the inverse tangent, and get the same value. On the older calculators, you enter in the ratio first, and then hit equals, and then hit inverse tangent. On the new calculators, you just type it in directly as I did. And that's how it's done. Okay? The inverse tangent is always used to find the angle. Let's make a note of that. Uh, the the inverse tangent, the inverse, okay, is always used, okay, when finding the angle. When finding 
the angle. Okay, so always remember that. And this is a key example right there. The inverse is always used to finding the angle. All right. Now let's take a look at some uh, more challenging examples here. And example number three, we want to find the difference in height between the two buildings. Okay, and that's here. So I'm going to call that X. And we want to find the height of the small building on the left. Okay, we'll call that H. So this distance right here is H. So we've got to find X, the difference, and we've got to find H. Okay, I know that the tall building is 207 meters. And if I knew X, all I had to do is subtract these two numbers here to get the height of the small building. So I'm going to need to find X first. Okay, the question is how to do that. So what I need to do is notice uh, that there's a little triangle, a right triangle in here. And I also notice that these parallel lines here are cut by a transversal, which means that this angle and this angle, these alternate interior angles are congruent. The alternate interior angles are congruent since the lines are parallel. All right, so inside my triangle here is a 15 degree angle, and that's what I need. I'm going to take this over here and enlarge it so you can see it better. Okay, so this angle is 15 degrees, this is 51 meters, and this is unknown. Okay, uh, let's label the sides. We've got opposite of 15 degrees is X, so this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side. And so what I want to do is set up a tangent function. So I want to take the tangent of 15 degrees and set that equal to X divided by 51. Why? Because it's always opposite divided by adjacent. I'm going to solve this equation for x, and so what I need to do is multiply both sides by 51. Okay, simplify there, and I get 51 times the tangent of 15 degrees, which we do on the calculator. So what do we have? We have 51 times the tangent of 15 degrees, and about 13.665. All right, so here we go. So x is approximately equal to 13.665. That's meters. And that's the difference in height. So H must be equal to 207 minus X, which is 13.665. So H is approximately equal to, all you have to do is go 207, recall minus your answer from above, go second answer, recall it, and you get about 193.335. 193.335. Meters. All right, so we have a couple of good results here. We have the difference in height, and then we have the height of the small building. Okay, and this is the difference in height. All right, pretty cool problem there, taken right out of your book. All right, so when you see uh, when you do your homework, you're going to see these problems here because my lessons are um, are developed through looking at your textbook and taking a variety of simple and more complex problems and showing them how, you, how they're done. Okay, in this case, uh, in this cool problem here, we got a real pyramid from Egypt here. It's 82 meters uh, on each base, on each base side. It's a square base, so this is also 82. And we want to find the height of it, H. Okay, so let's highlight it here. The height of any pyramid is from the top vertex down to the center of the base, and that is H. Okay, and what I need to do is to figure this out is to, I need to identify the right triangle involved uh, because, you know, trig, uh, our trig here that we're learning uses only right, or is based upon right triangles. We've got a right angle here. So it goes from the top vertex down to the center of the base all the way to the midpoint of its side uh, up along the face of the side. Okay, and there's a right triangle there, so let's highlight it so we can see it better here. Okay, that's inside your pyramid here, guys. And I know that this angle from here to here is 52 degrees. That's given to me. The only thing I need to know is this side length here. I need to know what this is. Well, if this distance is 82 to meters here, then this must be half of it. So I can divide it by 2 and I can put 41 meters here. Why? Because this is the center, all right? And the center, or the midpoint, divides it up into two equal parts. That's 41, and that's 41. So this piece right here, 41, must be the equivalent to uh, the one on the interior. 
Okay, so now I have a right triangle here. Adjacent to the angle is 41. Opposite of the angle is the height. Uh, the height. So I'm going to set up a tangent function here again. I'm going to take the tangent of 52 degrees and set it equal to the opposite side h divided by the adjacent side 41. It's always opposite divided by adjacent, as you guys know, by definition of tangent. So in this case, what I need to do to solve for the height here is I need to multiply both sides by 41. Okay, and that's a calculator problem. So I take 41 times the tangent of 52 degrees. So 41 times the tangent of 52 degrees. And you can see it's pretty straightforward after that. Once you set it up and make a step, then you're good to go on your calculator. 52.478. So 52.478 meters is the height of the pyramid. Pretty straightforward if you can identify the size and you can solve for the unknown and if you can use your calculator a little bit. Now, example five, uh, this is a lot more challenging one, okay? There are actually three triangles here, uh, two right and an obtuse. The, let's highlight here. Okay. This one here, the small one here, is a right triangle. And then the big one here, there's a big one, the main one here, that's another right triangle, okay? And then we have an obtuse triangle. You can only apply the tangent function to the, the two right triangles, not the obtuse. So let's focus our attention on the yellow one. Okay, on the yellow one here, I've got the adjacent side, W, and 10 is the opposite side. So at this point right here, just using the yellow triangle here, the small, okay, I can find W. So let's do that, find W here. So I take uh, the tangent of 56 degrees and set that equal to 10 divided by W because it's always opposite divided by adjacent. Okay, let's multiply both sides by W to clear fractions and get the variable out of the denominator. And I get uh, W times the tangent of 56 degrees equals 10. I divide by tangent of 56 degrees on both sides to solve for W and then kick in my calculator. So here we go. Let's take 10 divided by the tangent of 56 degrees and I get about 6.745. 6.745. That's W. Now to solve for X, I can't use the obtuse triangle. This is obtuse. And you only know right triangle trick, which means I can't use this triangle. So I have to use the main. So what I do is I, I need to know this. I need to find this distance here. Let's, let's call that Z. Because if I did, if I knew Z, all I have to do is subtract x, or excuse me, subtract w to find x. So if we knew z, and we could find z, we subtract w from it, and then we get x. So I've got to find z first. That's what makes this problem challenging, is because the, uh, it doesn't tell you how to solve it, and you have to know what to find first. And in this case, to find x, you've got to find something else first. So it's an indirect problem. Okay, so opposite of 34, okay, is right here. That's still 10. So a tangent of 34 degrees. This is on the big triangle here. We're using the main triangle now. Is equal to 10 divided by the adjacent side, which is Z. Adjacent, this, this base right here is adjacent to 34 degrees. So it's uh, divided by Z. Now, you don't want the variable in the denominator, so you've got to clear the fractions and multiply both sides by Z. And I get z times the tangent of 34 degrees is equal to 10. At this point, you divide both sides by the tangent of 34 degrees. Okay? And what do you get? You get z is equal to uh, 10 divided by the tangent of 34 degrees, which is your exact answer. Okay, at this point, though, you go to your calculator and you enter in 10 divided by the tangent of 34 degrees and it gives you 14.826. So 14.826. So this distance is 14.826 uh, and this distance is 6.745, 6.745. If I subtract these two, I get x. So x is equal to 14.826 minus 6.745. And then what I do is I just go minus 
6.745, hit enter, and I get about 8.081. So x is equal to 8.081. All right, there you go. This is your challenge problem. This is what you want to work up to. Uh, and you want to take this and go home and practice it on your own. Redo this problem and redo the problem next to it in your notes. Because again, these problems are directly taken from your homework. So open up your notes, keep them open, use it side by side with your homework, and do your homework well, check your answers, and then I'll see you back in class tomorrow. See you then.